Yeah. Um, but speaking of fire and heat, let's talk about NASA's new way for creating heat exchangers. And you know what? You might be thinking, wow, heat exchangers, that's so boring. But they're actually a very critical aspect of most spacecraft. Um, the environment's challenging. You either need to take extra heat out or put extra heat in so that all your systems are operating as you expect them to. The issue here is that to create heat exchangers, they got these like complex geometry of snake-like pipes going throughout them. And to manufacture them, you usually create them in parts and then join them together. The problem with that is that when you have multiple parts being joined together, you have multiple points of po potential failure. Yeah, I remember hearing in my machine design class that like 80% of failures happen at the fasteners. So where parts are joined, that's where failures occur. So, you know, I, I hear you saying this super complex part with a bunch of fins that need to be assembled. That seems like a lot of places that this can fail. Probably not so bad if it fails on Earth. Yep. Definitely critical if it fails in space and you can't go fix this thing. So That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's probably like it sucks if it fails on Earth, but it's really, really bad if it fails in space and you have minimal tools to take care of it. So as we've talked before, like so many times on this podcast, additive manufacturing kind of fits the bill here, right? You have a complex part that you want to create and you want it to be like essentially a single part without any fasteners. So wonderful. The issue here is that for space applications, you, t you typically want to have multiple metal types being joined together, like dissimilar metals. I think tantalum is the number one material used for radiation protection, but you also maybe want to incorporate aluminum because it's so lightweight. And with current additive manufacturing processes to do that, I believe it's challenging because you have to melt the material to be, again, at, at their melting point, which actually compromises their material properties. So not ideal. And with SLS, which is selective laser sintering technology, you actually end up making more porous structures, which again, for space applications, is probably not ideal. What they're doing here is called ultrasonic additive manufacturing. And as I was reading through it, it still didn't click for me, but they, there's like this one minute video from the contractor that NASA is using here. I highly encourage anyone that's interested to check it out. It really cleared it up for me, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. Essentially what you have is some sort of base metal, like for your heat exchanger. And then you have this machine that lays on like thin foils of the metal that you want to add to the manufacturer. And in doing so, it has this, uh, this ultrasonic uh, transducer that's emitting waves, which is resulting in like a friction of the foil connecting to the base plate. Once it's laid down all the foil that it wants to, you kind of have like CNC machines, a router come over and get rid of anything that's not, you know, desired in the part. Okay, so and they're laying down thin sheets of metal mm -hmm. using ultrasonic waves to vibrate the two layers together. Um, those vibrations cause these metals to fuse below their melting temperature, and then they have a router come in and clean it up after. So it's like they're stacking layers of paper and gluing them together and cutting out the shape that they want. Exactly. And the, the way I think about it is that it's kind of similar to friction welding, where you have like two pieces of metal and then you, you know, grind them against each other by rotating them and you eventually reach a point where they start to fuse together. Yeah, I, I've had some experience like with friction welding in my internships in the automotive space, but typically friction welding is used for like big chunks of metal that you can connect to heavy machinery and either rotate it or vibrate them back and forth. I'm excited about this thin film because it lends itself better to additive manufacturing. You can use, you know, thin films be very, very accurate, high resolution in your geometry and fuse it that way and then be able to clean it up after. I mean, it's, uh, I, th it's seems like the perfect application of this, you know, similar type f friction or thermal bonding without melting it. Um, but using ultrasonic waves transversely through the, th through the thin film to make an accurately constructed part. Exactly. And what I'm most interested about is that this technology allows you to embed sensors into the parts that you're creating. So let's say um, in, in a typical mechanical part, if you want to have any sort of sensor systems to monitor stress or strain in that specific area, you would have to put it on the outside of the part. So if you have any stress or st uh, concentrated stress or strain regions on the inside of the part, there's really no way for you to monitor it. Now you can embed the system in there, make sure that it's fully protected because the system is, again, just laying down layer after layer and adhering them really well to one another. So structurally sound. And again, in a space application where safety is the most important thing, you can monitor these parts and their performance in real time. 
Yeah, that's that's really exciting. I think, you know, aerospace, NASA, this is the perfect application for it where they want things that are super high performance, you know, have to be the perfect geometry, super critical with weight economy and everything. Um, I'm excited for this with NASA. I'm also excited to hopefully see some of this kind of trickle down um, through this science flywheel that is, you know, the aerospace industry and to see if there's any... Um, applications in consumer technology for making things you know better and more efficiently that we'll see every day in our lives. Well, I'm I'm happy you pointed that out because the NASA engineer that was working on this project that's actually what he said. He said we don't create technologies for a spacecraft. We create technologies that can be trickled down and hit academia and industry and just really help and it, like the organization, the field of study as a whole. And by the way, I forgot to mention this: NASA is spearheading this effort to integrate parts used. Um, to integrate the parts created by ultrasonic additive manufacturing in their spacecraft. However, it is their subcontractor, Fabersonic, that that created this technology to begin with. So okay, shout so out to I these guys. I could buy a Fabersonic printer if I wanted and do the yes. same thing in my house. Yes, shout out to these guys. I think they're based out of Ohio. So doing some really cool work. And I, I'll try to put the link for the video in our show notes because I think everyone should watch it. It's fascinating. Yeah, awesome. But yeah. 